SpaceX may be forced to go against its own philosophy to beat China in the new space race by giving up Starship's reusability. Of course, that doesn't mean every future version of Starship will be expendable. Instead, SpaceX could build a simplified Starship variant. No flaps, no heat shield, everything stripped down to the absolute minimum. The goal is simple. Win the new space race at any cost and stop China from monopolizing lunar operations before 2030. So, what exactly is the simplified Starship? And why is it so critical for moon missions, and possibly even Mars? Let's break it down in today's episode of Alpha Tech. So, on December 18th, 2025, after a wave of political drama and controversy surrounding billionaire Elon Musk, Jared Isaacman was officially sworn in as NASA's 15th administrator. As someone who has actually flown with SpaceX, understands commercial space tech firsthand, and has a genuine passion for pushing human exploration forward, Isaac Mann is widely expected to inject new momentum into Artemis. At the same time, President Trump signed an executive order on Thursday urging NASA to land Americans on the moon by 2028. The order was signed the very same day Isaac Mann was confirmed by the Senate and officially took office. Titled Ensuring American Space Superiority, the directive emphasizes the importance of upcoming Artemis missions in securing U.S. leadership on the moon and eventually Mars. Because of that, NASA's immediate priority is now Artemis II, currently targeted for launch in April 2026. This mission will send American astronauts into lunar orbit, the farthest humans have ever traveled into deep space. But that raises the big question. What about Artemis III? And what will SpaceX have to do to make it happen? If Artemis III really happens in 2028, as outlined in the signed executive order, then SpaceX would have just over two years to pull off an extremely demanding list of milestones, finishing Starship HLS, mastering orbital refueling, and flying an uncrewed HLS test mission that actually lands on the moon. So, can they meet that launch schedule? The answer is yes, but only if SpaceX is willing to go against its own rocket-building philosophy. As of now, we still don't actually know how many Starship HLS vehicles SpaceX is building. At a minimum, they need at least two, one for an uncrewed lunar landing test and another for the actual Artemis III mission. But is two really enough? During a test mission, anything can go wrong. If something fails, what's the backup plan? Especially when we already know that building a single HLS takes years, not months. That's exactly why a simplified Starship makes sense. It would serve as a dedicated lunar landing test vehicle, while also doubling as a cargo transporter to the moon in the future. Basically, you can think of the simplified Starship as a stripped-down version of Starship HLS. It wouldn't have a heat shield because it's only going to the moon once and never returning to face the brutal heat of Earth's atmosphere. It wouldn't have those massive flaps either, since lunar landings rely primarily on the reaction control system and the Raptor engines. No solar arrays, simplified avionics, and reduced structural reinforcement. What you're left with is a powerful upper stage built for one single job, delivering payloads to the moon. And once it gets there, it stays put, waiting to be reused later as part of a future lunar base. And the advantages are huge. Just building and installing a full heat shield, around 18,000 specialized ceramic tiles, along with heavy stainless steel flaps that weigh several tons, already costs a massive amount of money. The exact numbers aren't public, but estimates put it at no less than $5 million. By removing all of that, the simplified Starship saves SpaceX not only on cost, but also on production speed. Right now, assembling a fully featured Starship takes roughly two months. A simplified Starship? About one month, at roughly half the price. Of course, there's a trade-off. A standard Starship is fully reusable, which means the cost per flight could be around $10 million, or even less. A simplified Starship, on the other hand, is expendable. So, does that mean SpaceX just loses all the money invested in it? Not at all. First, SpaceX can use the simplified Starship as a stand-in for Starship HLS to perform real lunar landings, gathering critical data needed for high-fidelity 3D landing simulations. Second, it still gets reused, just not in the traditional way, by becoming part of a permanent lunar base. When you look at the value of that data and infrastructure, 
Is spending around 20 to $30 million on production worth it? Absolutely. And for comparison, NASA's space launch system, the rocket used for Artemis missions, is also expendable, but each launch costs about $2.2 billion. Against that, $30 million for a simplified Starship is almost nothing. So how exactly would the simplified Starship help the United States beat China in the race to the moon? Back in May 2023, China made its intentions crystal clear. At a press conference, Lin Xiqiang, deputy director of the China Manned Space Agency, publicly confirmed that China plans to land astronauts on the moon by 2030. Fast forward a little over two years, and China has already carried out multiple tests of its Lan Yu lunar lander. More importantly, that 2030 target hasn't slipped, unlike NASA's Artemis program. That tells us one thing. China is serious, disciplined, and absolutely locked in on this goal. This is not just talk, and we've seen this pattern before. In 2010, China announced it would build its own space station. Many people doubted it. Yet today, alongside the ISS, we now have China's Tiangong space station permanently operating in orbit. The same thing could happen on the moon. That's why the United States has to push Artemis three aggressively and get humans back to the lunar surface before China does. This matters far more than most people realize. While the Outer Space Treaty, signed by more than 110 countries, forbids territorial claims in space, it does not ban resource extraction. In other words, you can't own the moon, but you can mine it. If China gets there first and starts extracting lunar material and selling it, that would be a massive blow to U.S. space leadership, especially for a nation long seen as the global leader in space exploration. And yes, the lunar regolith is incredibly valuable. In some cases, it's worth far more than diamonds, even more than meteorites, not just for scientific research, but as a collector's item. Lunar soil doesn't naturally fall to Earth. It doesn't exist here. If China controls supply, there would be hundreds, even thousands of billionaires worldwide lining up to buy it. At that point, China wouldn't just get richer, it would gain long-term dominance. This is where the simplified Starship comes in. By stripping Starship down to its essentials, SpaceX can dramatically accelerate uncrewed HLS test landings, gather critical real-world data faster, and significantly increase the success rate of a crewed lunar landing. And that's exactly what Artemis 3 needs, a reliable, proven system ready for a 2028 landing. Next, beyond lunar landing tests, this simplified version also helps SpaceX tackle another challenge that's just as difficult, orbital refueling. Starship needs to refuel in orbit to reach the moon, because on a single launch, it can only make it to low Earth orbit with enough propellant left for a safe return and controlled landing. To go any farther, it has to refill its tanks in space using multiple Starship tanker flights. And that's where things get really hard. No one has ever transferred cryogenic propellant in microgravity before. Liquid methane and liquid oxygen are stored at around minus 160 and minus 183 degrees Celsius, and they're constantly boiling off, even inside insulated tanks. In microgravity, the liquid doesn't settle at the bottom like it does on Earth. It floats around in unpredictable ways. Managing pressure, flow rates, venting, and thermal control while transferring propellant between two spacecraft, moving at roughly 17,000 miles per hour, is an engineering nightmare. SpaceX doesn't even know yet how many tanker flights a single lunar mission will require. Estimates range anywhere from 8 to 16 launches. That's exactly why a live orbital refueling demonstration using a simplified Starship, potentially happening as early as June 2026, is so critical. It would give SpaceX real-world data and finally allow them to plan future moon missions with confidence. Looking further ahead, the simplified Starship could become even more important, not just for lunar missions, but potentially for Mars as well. Because Starship's ultimate goal isn't simply to land on the moon, NASA already did that more than 50 years ago during Apollo. The real challenge now is something much bigger, building Moonbase Alpha. Moonbase Alpha is planned near the moon's south pole, where water ice is available for extraction. The base would need habitats, power stations, and full ESRU systems, in situ resource utilization, using local materials like lunar regolith to extract oxygen. And that means one thing, massive amounts of hardware need to be delivered from Earth. This is where the simplified Starship becomes essential. 
It would still use six Raptor 3 engines on the upper stage, producing around 1,600 tons of thrust. But with major systems removed, the dry mass could be reduced by roughly 20 to 30 percent. Fully fueled, it would weigh around 1,400 tons. Same thrust, less mass. That makes a huge difference. A lighter Starship means Super Heavy can push it to a higher energy orbit, reducing the time and number of orbital refueling flights. It also makes the journey to the moon and the landing itself far easier. And there's more. Simplified Starship could carry significantly more cargo, with estimates reaching up to 200 tons per flight. That would dramatically shorten the construction timeline for Moonbase Alpha, while helping the United States maintain its leadership in the global space race. So, what do you think about the simplified Starship concept? Is it actually feasible? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Of course, this is the part Elon Musk probably hates to admit. SpaceX may have committed too much to reusability right from day one. Reusability is the holy grail of spaceflight economics, and Musk built his entire vision around it. But making Starship fully reusable means solving problems that have never been solved before, at a scale no one has ever attempted. As a result, flight after flight has been dominated by landing attempts, heat shield performance, and flap control, while the simple act of putting payloads into orbit keeps getting delayed. If SpaceX had started with a simple, expendable upper stage back in 2023, they might already have dozens of successful orbital missions under their belt. They could have refined operations, validated orbital refueling, and proven out the Super Heavy booster, which is far easier to recover and carries the most expensive Raptor engines. Then, once the flight cadence was stable, reusability could have been added step by step. Instead, SpaceX is trying to perfect everything at once, while the clock is ticking. But that is the SpaceX mindset, pushing into territory the industry has never dared to enter. And that's exactly why they've become the world's leading private space company, and why, one day they may help the United States outpace China, not just once, but for good.